the GOP looking for a message that resonates with voters. John Boehner today tried out the alternative party. We'll do a quick poll here next about the alternative party. Stay with us. We're coming right back. Well, score one for the Republican Party. MSNBC President Phil Griffin today apologized to Republican National Committee Chairman Reince Priebus for what he called an outrageous and unacceptable tweet by NBC accusing conservatives of hostility toward biracial families. The tweet that was pulled read, quote, maybe the right wing will hate it, but everyone else will go, aw, or whatever that means. The adorable new Cheerios ad with a biracial family was the reason for the nonsensical and outrageously offensive tweet by MSNBC. Griffin's apology and the firing of the staffer who tweeted that message came only hours after Chairman Priebus vowed to keep Republicans off that cable channel unless they did apologize. A new poll out shows Hillary Clinton continues to crush other potential 2016 presidential candidates. The Washington Post ABC survey finds Clinton with 73 percent among Democrats, followed by Vice President Biden a distant second, as you see, and Senator Elizabeth Warren in third place. Clinton's six to one lead is the largest ever recorded in that poll. And Republicans, well, Congressman Paul Ryan leading with 20% Republican support, followed by Jeb Bush and Governor Chris Christie. But there is another new poll that shows our first guest here tonight in front. The public policy polling survey has former Arkansas Governor Mike Huckabee leading the way with 16%, Jeb Bush at 14, Governor Christie 13%. Joining us now, Mike Huckabee, former governor and host of Huckabee on the Fox News Channel. He says he's keeping an open mind about exploring a run for president. And, and Mike, it's great to have you here. You've got to feel good about these polls that show you consistently at the forefront uh, among the leaders are leading uh, for potential uh, 2016 uh, candidates. It's always better to be at the top of those things than at the bottom. I'm glad your name wasn't on the list, Lou, because I'd be way back in the pack. And I'm uh, afraid I, you'd be leading. You have but never been safer, my friend. But it's a long way for making friend. a decision. <laughs> you know what? I, I think that all of the talk, though, about who's going to run and who's, who's leading, a little premature. The most important thing Republicans have to focus on, getting control of the Senate, pushing Harry Reid to the back of the room so he doesn't bottle up and keep any legislation from ever getting through. He has become the great hen sitting on the egg of every idea that comes out of the House and uh, every piece of legislation. It's like the Roach Motel. Mm -hmm. Things go in, they never come out. And the Senate, uh, Senator Ted Cruz said today, Republicans will lose their opportunity to regain control of the Senate if the Boehner plan goes forward. That is apparently his preference for a pathway to citizenship uh, in any reform legislation rather than uh, full support for the uh, Chairman Bob Goodlatte's Judiciary Committee's incremental approach and a uh, pathway to legal status instead of citizenship. Well, I think uh, Senator Cruz is right on this one. I really do, because what's the hurry? What is the urgency to take a Democratic plan and to rush it into legislation? The last time we rushed something into legislation that the Democrats dreamed up, we got Obamacare. And unless there's some serious, thoughtful discussion of how any reform would be implemented, I think Republicans ought to throttle back, yeah. uh, wait until they take both the House and Senate, then they can manage that legislation far more effectively and keep it from becoming blanket amnesty, which I think would be a disaster, not just for the Republican Party, a disaster for the country. Yeah, and there are some who would hold a disaster for the Republican Party seeking to wrest control uh, from the Democrats, uh, the, the Senate and the White House, uh, that that would be automatically uh, disastrous for the country. Uh, today's GOP, and I've got to be straightforward here, and so I have been calling upon the Republican Party to develop a message and to, to identify itself uh, much in much stronger terms with the middle class in this country and those who aspire to it. And out comes today Speaker Boehner at the retreat saying he does not want the Republican Party to be the simply the opposition party. He wants Republicans to be known as the, quote, alternative party. 
Is there not someone in GOP leadership who understands language and how to use it? Well, I'd like to think so. I think it was a good line that Boehner used. You don't want to just be known for what you're against. You want to be known for what you're for. But what you need to be for is not a different form of big government, but it's less government and government that is shifted from Washington and a centralized government, which would be an anathema to the founders, and to push it back where mayors and governors are making decisions and not a bunch of people who are thousands of miles, thousands of miles removed from the impact of those decisions sitting in Washington. That's what I believe the Republicans need to do. We've got to communicate our message, Lou, in such a way that we're talking to the people who are working in the kitchen and not just the people sitting at the head table, because there are a lot more Americans who are working in kitchens than will ever sit at the head table. And those are the folks who feel like that neither party knows who they are, cares who they are, or has anything for them. I, I, I love what you're saying, talking to the folks in the kitchen. Uh, as well as to those at the head table. I, I don't get the feeling, though, that Republicans are talking to the people at the head table. I think, indeed, they're listening to the people at the head table and doing their bidding too often, whether it be the Chamber of Commerce, whether it be the Business Roundtable, whether it be the establishment in this country. Uh, the Republican Party is not standing up uh, for self-reliance, for independence uh, in either its messaging uh, or uh, it, its campaign uh, connections. Uh, with the middle class, working men and women. Do you uh, think you could change that I think yourself? that's a very fair assessment. In fact, I think the Republicans have got to put a bigger focus on the small business of America, not the big business. They're going to be fine. I've said so many times, Lou, and it doesn't make me exactly the most popular guy in the room, uh, but I've said that we have this Washington to Wall Street axis of power uh, that has dominated the political landscape, and frankly, it dominates both parties. But the problem is, both of these sides, one is funding the politicians, and the politicians are in turn granting all sorts of favors as if they were the tooth fairy. And it's high time that the, the Republican Party say, look, our job is not to empower the already empowered. It's to find a way to empower the people who don't have high-priced lobbyists in Washington working for them, but they're the people who are sketching out their business ideas on a paper napkin. They're the ones who are going to grow 80% of the jobs in this country. That's where Republicans need to be focused. Governor, as always, great to talk with you. Thanks for being here. Governor Mike Huckabee. My pleasure, Lou. Thank you. Thanks, Mike. Be sure to watch Huckabee on the Fox News Channel Saturday and Sunday nights, 8 p.m. Eastern. And coming up next, House Speaker John Boehner. He's come up with a message for the Republican Party. In the chalk talk tonight, we'll show you why it just, well, may be, well, deserving of some improvement. We're coming right back. Stay with us.